Well, hello, hello. I hope everybody's having a good night. It is literally a nasty day here in South Mississippi. We had tons and tons of rain. Uh, I've been actually trying to cut grass in the rain. I think it rained about two or three inches this afternoon. Yeah, so. we, we got a lot of rain. There's a is have they considered it a? There's a thunderstorm. I don't know. Oh, well, the, the tropical down storm. The Gulf. I don't know. It's it's coming. Um, I think it's still a tropical depression right now. But if they think it's going to turn into a tropical storm, probably a hurricane one going to New Orleans. So, so we're getting some of that out of the Gulf. Um, we've gotten. We're going to be on the east side of this heavy hurricane Pretty rains too. from that. So. I don't know if y'all seen New Orleans. It's Suffered actually flooded seven, already. Hey. Yeah, hey, Suburb 7. But uh, it's already flooding in New Orleans on Canal Street. I saw it was actually in businesses and hotels already. So it's coming. We're only about two hours above New Orleans. So we're not too far. When from, it gets so. down there in the Gulf, we definitely get affected for sure. Yeah, this is the first time we've been on the really the east side of the storm. So. Well, do you want to tell them? <laughs> Crystal Creek, you're right. You're not too far above us. So I know you're getting ready too, but. It's been flooding here today. So you want to tell them what our new addition was we got yesterday? Yeah, we Good got, thing uh, today and not, I mean, yesterday, not today, or we would have kind of been in the mess. Uh, hey, Beaver Creek. Yeah, I know it rained on us today too. I was trying to cut grass. Uh, new addition for the farm. Boom, boom. Uh, we got a new bull calf. Hopefully, get, he won't be as stubborn and stupid, stupid. as Sizzle. He's really taken to Elsa. Um, He's a lot younger, but I'd say at least the same size as yeah, Sizzle he, was. Oh yeah, he's I mean, probably he's a little gonna bit bigger. He's going to be a big Sizzle. old boy. Yeah, he's um he he's uh he's a half Brangus um or Brangus cross really mm -hmm. Angus cross. Uh, his daddy was a um hey cabin in the woods was a Hereford. So he he is going to be a big. He, he's actually a baldy if you know what that is, but uh he's, he's a baldy. Per, he's so. a pretty little guy. He's going to be big for sure. So we'll good be able evening, to get Cal a, Cabin. A good bit of meat off him, but we named him Ike. So. If y'all know my OCD husband, um, who we've gone ABCD all the way through, so we're at I now. So he, we named him Ike, and um, I think he's gonna be good. I think he's gonna do good here. He's done well. He was a little timid at first, but uh, he's very vocal, like Beauty is. So. He was scaring Jennings to death yesterday. Yeah. Every time he would move, it's real loud, and Jennings would just cry his little eyes out. But one good thing is we um we we got him. We actually put uh, Elsa with him, our milk cow, because she was she's used to being a, a mother figure to a calf. So um, we put her with him, and and really she kind of bonded with him, and he's kind of followed her around all day. So it's kind of worked out good. Uh, really well, and he had just come off his mom, so we were a little nervous yeah. about maybe him trying to get on Elsa and drink her milk. And we were like, We can't have that, that's our milk. So we watched him pretty close for the first little bit, but he did good. I mean, she, um, she really wouldn't let him milk. So tell him to turn that down, buddy. Our son's got the TV on, it's like. <laughs> We don't have TV, hey, but Smith, we watch uh, we watch it off our iPads, and he's got it blaring over there. We just took yeah, we we'll took <laughs> it into the TV. Thanks so much, thanks so much. We're excited to have him. He's uh he's we've taken a few pictures of him, and we started on a video, so probably Hopefully. not tomorrow, but Friday's video, um, which will be our next next video. Yeah, will we be usually on, try to publish like, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and sometimes on Saturdays. Doing to well tonight, them. Smith family. Uh, we were just talking about our little new bull calf we got, so. Um, what's so funny is, is he was sold to these people. The reason we, we actually got a really good deal on him. Uh, we went to, uh, South Mississippi to get him, uh, even more South than us right on the Louisiana line. But it was, uh, they, they were buying a, a herd and the herd was supposed to be, uh, basically mama, mama cows and, and heifers. And, uh, they bought it and all of a sudden they ended up having a bull calf in the midst of all this and they did not need a bull calf. So. <laughs> Uh, they were trying to get rid of him. Yes, very, very quickly. And we so actually got him for a really on. reasonable price, which is really what sparked our interest. So, yeah, I mean, really, really good price. Um, St. Bernard, Louisiana, turkey coop collapsed with the rain, but the turkeys are okay. We got some pretty heavy rains here, but definitely yeah, not, we're not that much. We're not too far. I mean, we're about 40 minutes over um, the Louisiana line, so we're not too far from. Louisiana, so we've been keeping an eye on the storm as well. I already saw New Orleans being flooded, so that's that's crazy, very crazy. So we, we always watch. Five deer at the feeding lot. Uh, our cabin in the woods 
wife is out back watching. That's sweet. We love to watch deer. They're so peaceful and the kids saw calm. two deer uh, on the pond dam the other day. So uh, it's getting that time. I'm telling you, we I, there were some people today buying summer plot um, uh, mixes to go into their summer plots this weekend. So uh, we're getting excited already. Smith family said they have a storm right now that has knocked their power out. I hate that. We we don't do good with power without power in the deep south. So we can deal with it, but it does power. get really hot and humid. So it's I been humid the last yeah. few days here. Very, very humid. We've been trying to finish up on our garden and get all that taken care of. And we're actually preparing for our fall garden already. It's amazing that we're already talking about that, but we've already taken some of the old rows down and some of the stuff that's not working. Uh, if you saw in a new video, we, we started our pumpkin patch. We started our fall corn. Uh, we started some fall cucumbers, which we've never done. They're actually coming up really well. Actually, I forgot to show you that. They're coming up really good. Uh, and then we're going to actually use silage tarps, which we'll have a video on that. But we're going to use silage tarps and wheat barrier for winter to see if that helps. Because this year we had a crazy amount of grass. Way too much. In the garden. Crystal Creek Farm said... Uh, we have a new addition today as well. It was their cabin delivered. Well, hey, that's really cool. Congratulations. Cool. And Smith family says, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you, Smith family. Yes, that like button is important. <laughs> hey, Overlook Valley. Thanks for coming. Um, that, My train of thought just totally left. I was just going to say something. Talking about the garden. Uh, oh, talking about being hot and humid. Oh, yeah. Y'all happened to get to our video today that we published today. Um, so we harvested, what day was that? Yeah. Saturday. Was it Saturday? Friday yeah, or Saturday. Saturday? No, it was Friday because you okay. worked all day Saturday. It was Friday. So um, we harvested. 12 we gallons had, that day 13 that day and then we had three and of half honey left. and it was so hot we had sweat just dripping off it was so <laughs> hot and it was so humid we and all those bee suits. as i say if you don't know what a bee suit is we the bee suits don't oh. make it any better either so uh, but hey, it was it was worth it. I always love we love honey, so it was really yeah, good. Yeah, it was us, so. definitely worth it. But hot and humid, and it has definitely been hot and humid. In that video, you can see us just covered in sweat through those. I think Misty um, made reference to sweating and being hot. I think like a about million seven times. times in that video. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it, and it, if the you video haven't good. watched that video, watch it. It is good. We had some crazy events happen that day. Everything from I hate to spoil spoil the surprise, but um everything from the we had a crate sitting on the back of the trailer and we were going down the road and we didn't have the back on and apparently we went over a railroad track and the crate fell out and we know that because we found some of the stuff that was in the crate laying in the middle of the road and um so we once we got to where we were going we realized that we had lost it we turned around backtrack found the we had a big paper sack full of um pine straw that we light our smoker with and we found that in the middle of the road with the crate with all of our beetles mm -hmm. our smoker and all that was nowhere to be found so we had to wing it the whole time we were pulling that honey we usually when you pull the frames out and you got all the bees on it you want to sweep as many bees as you can off before you take the frame and put it in another location and cover it up to try to keep the bees off of it because you've got to eventually get that and bring it to a place where you can sling it, get the wax off and sling it without all the bees. So we used a paintbrush. <laughs> it, it was crazy. I, we did get all our bee stuff not in. We didn't get it back, but we had to order some more because we uh, just trying to make sure we're prepared as we come back. But we kind of had to makeshift that whole Yeah, and then we got experience. into our best hive and got a big surprise. So check out that video if you haven't seen it. We were both like extremely shocked and had to kind of maneuver some stuff to get that hive back right. So it was pretty, um, pretty crazy day. We're excited about the, the spring flow though. We had about 17 to 18 gallons. Uh, we've always said we wanted about 20 to 25 gallons. So we had 70, 18. Uh, this spring so we were real pleased with that and we're hoping fall is even bigger so um thanks for coming by she's going country thanks for joining us in our cabin in the woods i saw your comment <laughs> uh hey i'll be honest with you my wife was all four bees before i was so you never know she may come around uh swampy acres too that's hot it, it was swampy acres thank you for coming too we're doing really well um yeah colby used to beg 
Uh, no, I used to beg. He yeah, didn't want yeah. them, and I begged long enough, and we finally got them, and now that's his favorite thing. So just hang in there. They, yeah. We really enjoy them, and they, I think Colby mentioned last time, they really give us a um, return on profit. So that's Yeah, I mean, bees are fun, but like, like Misty just said, if you're looking to try to find ways to make money on your homestead, bees are a good – a uh, good way to do it. I mean, it really is. Crystal so. Creek Farm said it's no fun when everything goes right. That's <laughs> true. And we definitely got into a pickle. If y'all seen the video, we got in that, in the honey supers in our best hive and realized, oh no. So we got it all worked out and um, it worked out okay. It worked out okay in the end. But initially, if you see my crazy face on the on the on the screenshot that's why uh so anyway we got in there and got in to a surprise i don't know if you can see all this this is our, our tomato harvest we took some pictures and put on uh social media but we have we've had a great harvest so far we finally the last gotten few days. several gone out to get several i don't know again if y'all been following us the the non gmo heirloom garden uh, we did like the tomatoes just because they are unique. I love Cherokee purple tomatoes. I love the little orange ones. I don't even know what they are. They're awesome though. But um, there's aspects of our garden that we do have to do different for sure when we talk about uh, next spring. But uh, we're excited about fall again. We went and bought you know cabbage seeds, uh, lettuce seeds today, mustards, collards, and then again um, uh, just some more little Audian little things that we're going to eat and, and make for salads. I love winter garden because hey, there's no weeds or way less. So. Way That's actually is. my favorite, favorite thing. So happy Our wife, happy life. Wood says <laughs> she's wearing the pants on this one. Happy wife, happy life. That's Absolutely. Funny. <laughs> uh, we love bees. Like I said, they're, they're fun. Um, we can talk about them and I can get talking about them all day. So, you yeah. know, I love them. So. But they, I, I would just definitely suggest do your research, kind of know what you're looking at, what your investment is going to look like. Um, learn different things about your area and environment and stuff like that. And you'll definitely do well with them. Um, um, one of the yeah. things I wanted to mention that um, we talked about on one of our very first lives was I remember talking about uh, mentioning to y'all about our chicken. We had a little chicken that we hatched out and um, had tried to incorporate it in with some bigger ones. And I had all intentions to go check on that little rascal early one morning. And we had ended up having a really bad morning. And I didn't get out there to check on it. So by the time it was after lunch and I got out there and I went out there and it's, it's right under, I guess, what would you say? The pullet stage. Yes, it's a pullet. So, um, but this was several weeks ago. So he was still kind of little. Um, so anyway, we get out there and it's got a hole in the top of its head, like a nice size hole. And all of its meat from the side of its neck, all its feathers were just gone and it had just meat just hanging. It looked terrible. I told Colby, I was like, there's no way it's going to live. It's going to die. But I've been cleaning it um, with betadine. I've been cleaning out the uh, little container that I have it in every day. And it's still doing good. So it's still living. Um, I've been feeding it real heavy. I'm hoping to go ahead and get it up a little bit bigger so I can better. try to. Yeah, she is looking so is looking better. much better. All of her skin is healed back up. She still has an indention in the top of her head where they, um, I guess, pecked that down so much. It was terrible. I knew for sure the little thing was going to die, but it didn't. I'm still nursing it. And so it's still alive and doing good. So if you get in a predicament like that and you think, well, this thing is going to die, um, just nurse it. It, it, it did live. So, um, thanks for stopping by crystal Creek. Have a good night. So, uh, also one of the things I wanted to mention was our elderberry plants. Mm -hmm. So we made a video on it's our been elderberry plants it's been several weeks ago and we had three that we bought and we planted them at the end of the driveway and they only grew like this tall so they were t90 they never would grow so we dug them up put them in our greenhouse and they exploded so when i finally was um ready to put them in the yard i decided to do three different locations and um one we ended up having to dig up, mm -hmm. and it's still in the bucket, but it's alive. It's alive. It's doing okay. Um, it's we thought to we thought we were going to lose it, so something with the soil there is not good. We're going to move it, and then we put one beside the chicken coop, 
and it's grown what two feet yeah it's grown really it's good. grown tremendously <laughs> but it's in chicken fur lines, it's too. getting the rain water and that that was my goal because i wanted to kind of see the different spots the different suns the different soils it is done amazing and mm -hmm. then we planted one in the middle of like um our back patio place it's got some elderberry bushes and stuff and mm -hmm. it's done okay it's, done okay. it's, done okay. it's maintained uh, the, we're we we actually got these three um online, online. we bought they these online. online now we did buy some cuttings from uh, a person in louisiana i know brizards does too uh sell some the person we bought them from in west monroe uh misty smoked them i smoked them she smoked them i grabbed the triple 13 fertilizer we use organic oh. fertilizer but we had triple 13 for where we do deer plots and things like that and uh she thought it was the organic fertilizer and she smoked them I and her apple to, trees i just went to town thought i was trees. doing good feeding them and i was using fertilizer i and went I out killed, there one day and i was like I man they look burnt one but she smoked them. and they grew i mean we had rooted them we had planted them in soil they were growing they were doing so good and i thought i was feeding them we're not even gonna talk about the apples though the apple trees the first apples. year to have apples i mean like big apples yeah we had like seven or eight hanging on there i was so oh, was excited more than that okay it 10 more than that. so you killed more than seven you killed 10 and i think she smoked oh, yeah. i know she smoked one tree hopefully we can keep the other one and try to get it back but yeah we're not gonna about that. i had to like dig it she actually put it on a lot of other things but we got it off real quick so yeah i called one of the ladies <laughs> and was like what do I do? And she said, just get him, get as much away from it as you can and just put water on it, water on it, water on it. When it doesn't rain, just kind of keep water on it and keep it kind of flushed out. I was like, what? you know, with organic fertilizer, which is what we usually use, you know, it's, it's, it's released time release. So it's one of those things where you can put it on there. It only pulls what it needs. Well, you know, fertilizer like triple 13, you just, it's gonna load it and she burned it so uh. yeah. i'm talking leaves turned brown shriveled up and fell off and i was like but hey you know like i said i think we're gonna be able to save one apple tree um the other one though is gone it is gone so but um this year we've tried to do better with fruit and we did but uh not that apple tree for sure <laughs> um so I started making some zucchini bread too. Yeah, I tell you the what. The first time we had so much awesome. we had so much zucchini, I was like, what am I gonna do with all this? So I started looking at some things that I could do with zucchini. And if y'all have any ideas, please share them because we are like <laughs> we've been over, eating salt, sauteed zucchini like every night. Every pretty much, pretty much for yeah. like the last two or three weeks. Which hey, I'm not complaining, but I mean it's really good. But then like when you cut it up and you freeze it because it's got such a high water cont content, it's when soggy. you pull it out, it's soggy and I just don't like it. Yeah. So uh, one of the things I started doing was making zucchini bread. And if any of y'all are interested, y'all can um, get in contact with me with email or social media and I'll share the recipe with you. It is really easy. It's got all the ingredients that you would have in your right in your kitchen. Not the normally. most healthiest. I mean, when we say it's, zucchini bread, it's actually like more like zucchini sweet cake. cake. Yeah, you know? kind of. <laughs> but it but is the bomb. It like, is really, really good. It does call for two cups of sugar. Ask his mom. Uh, so she's the one that was like, I've got this recipe right here. I think you would like. <laughs> and I tried it. And I was like, how many cups of sugar does it have, though? And she was like, well, it, I think it has a cup in it. And then I got the recipe and I was like, ooh, that calls for <laughs> two cups of sugar. But it, it is really but good. It like, is if you're looking really for something good. that's just a little sweet, uh, not overly sweet. But it, and actually, you know, when you think of zucchini being in bread, I, I, when I first heard it, I was like, oh, I don't know. But it, it also remind, it reminds you of like almost like a banana nut bread. Of course, not with nuts, but you banana can nut with bread the nuts. taste. The nuts are optional, but I chose not to. But and also, it, it kind of reminds me of a like I told Misty, like a gingerbread bread, like a gingerbread. I, I guess you can say it, it's got it a really cinnamony good, taste to it, but it's it, it, it really is good. I mean, it vanilla. really is. Like if you're looking for something to have with like coffee or just like a little snack, it really is good. Yeah, it has cinnamon and vanilla in it, so that's probably where you're getting that. Oh, but I, I thought it was really good. I, I've enjoyed it, and we've made enough to – we're actually take some to the farmer's market this, yeah. this week, so we're excited about that too. Well, and I kept the nuts out of it for me because the, it's a, eat something easy that the baby really likes, and so I can take it and just chop it up into little bitty squares, and he can eat that um, easy yep. without the nuts in it. 
Swampy Acres. We actually talked about that. We we I wish we'd have bought the variety that's more like a spaghetti spaghetti <laughs> spaghetti spaghetti as what our my kids say <laughs> spaghetti sw- squash. But uh, we didn't. We bought just the regular <laughs> zucchini, which. Like I said, I, I've heard people make just straight pasta with it, but um, we we've talked now, about I that. Think, we haven't done it yet. I think that they have to have. There's a little gadget that you use to make it with. I don't yeah. have that, so I would have to look into that. Maybe talking about Stivers Homestead just did a video on that. I, I thought okay. I saw that come across. I hadn't watched it yet, so. But uh, yeah, it does have some sugar, but it, it really is good. I guess you could use you could substitute honey mm-hmm. for it, but Captain we try not Lloyd to. Said so. no. No sugar. Well, I guess you maybe could sh- substitute it out with honey, mm-hmm. which is what I normally do. On anything. We just didn't know what. We've never made this before. so I have never made it, but my goal was to, um, I wanted to use it to take to the mar- farmer's yeah. market. And what I make, I, I don't do anything crazy with the stuff I take to the farmer's market. So I wanted to make it to see what it was going to be like before I took it. So I used the sugar because that's what I was going to be taking to make to the farmer's market. But I guess you could substitute honey out. And when I make it for us, I probably will. Hey, uh, Little Feet Farm Homestead, you had uh, your first calf. How awesome is that? Yay. We pulled up. Very we had exciting. A, yeah, Homestead in the hard way. I was just supposed to address that too. Our, our little white calf is doing good. It's actually, this white calf is really more my father's. It's just on the, we share land with uh, where that those cows are. Sure cows on that land. Excuse me. Um, but, uh, we bought a new calf today or yesterday, a uh, little bull calf, but, uh, the little white calf is doing great. He's gotten to where he just, just runs, she runs around and just in circles and, uh, kind of leaves her mom a little bit. So she's getting a little bit more comfortable with, uh, being around people, I guess you could say. So it's, it's done really well. So cut into slices and make pizzas. Mm, that'll huh. have to be something I'll look into. Never heard of that. Yeah, I hadn't either. That's pretty cool. So we'll have to try that. But so did your um, mama do good with delivery? And if she nursing well, did she take take you know, sometimes you hear Yeah. I've always thought, well, they just have their babies and go on about their business. You the know, that's what their take. nature to do. But then I the more we've gotten into this, I've heard some people say, Well, we ended up having to bottle feed or we had to do this. So how did little your, feet farm homestead, correct? Yeah. yeah. So how did your um mama do? We um the little bull calf we got, we were excited, but we were worried about him trying to take to to, to our Elsa, oh, our milk cow. So they they bought the calf. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I just got my first calf. We were thinking delivery. Sorry, it's been a long day here. Sorry, <laughs> it's been a long day for both. <laughs> well, that's of us. great. That's great. The first calf. Very ever. exciting. We um we picked up one yesterday as well. We were missing one part. If y'all ever, if y'all go back to some of our first videos, we had a little uh, a little bull calf that um. Uh, um, was breaking barbed wire so that mm. we didn't want a crazy cast so we had to get rid of him so now we're just replacing him but we chased him all over this property and when we got him in the second time he broke through the fence i said no more we're he he's got to go yeah hey amy watson thanks so for coming we, in we got rid of him and hope i think this one's gonna be okay you can tell he's been around people he hasn't just been out in a pasture um he's been around people so he's been he's been great i think he's gonna do good swampy acres uh y'all are worried about getting cows what are y'all worried about uh i will tell you this with our cows um we we tend to the only cow that we have on feed is is our milk cow just because she's on a dairy feed and also alfalfa our other cows are really on grass um if i give them anything else it's just because i just want to it's wet there you know, I agree there. We, now, we're if where we sit, um, I'm not sure where you're located, but in South Mississippi, we're actually in the swamp. Yeah, swampy acres. <laughs> I understand that. I don't know if it's Louisiana though. But for instance, where we sit, we sit at the start of the Bogachitta River, which is where um, it comes down. It's real narrow where we're at, but it's uh, low here. Yeah, but it springs into here. So for us, it's a real wet area too. But to be honest with you, our grass grows really good because of that. So uh, there's positives and negatives to it for sure. So, wow. PA <laughs> She's really? in Pennsylvania. Uh, yeah, I, it's in, we're wow. swampy, and, and especially we have 10 paddocks, um, and three Crazy of them are completely, genetic. completely in the, um, in the wet spot. So, yeah, yeah well, you're right. Genetics plays a big key in it. And, uh, that's why we, if we, with our mama cows, if our mama cows are crazy, I know they're going to probably throw off calves. It's crazy. So far, all our mama cows or all our older cows are gentle. Um, that's why we even wanted to get Jersey rid of Bull, him, Which we've always heard around here. Everybody's always like Jersey bulls are the most aggressive. 
I will say from our experience so far, our, our bull, been good. he is probably the most laid back but of all. Please don't, don't, under turn don't your underestimate a bull or a cow because they can't Period, kill because you. Because they're so big. But, right. uh, our our but boy, is, he is gentle as can be. I, he's probably the most gentle that we have. Yeah, I, would say. I will definitely say he's the slowest moving. He's the <laughs> most just. He's lazy. He just go and say he's lazy. He, <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a he's a, he is a sweetheart though. He, he likes really for us to rub his face. I yeah. mean, he's he's very people. Well, I mean, yeah, he, he really is. is. Um, but we you know we've heard some people say we can't even go in the field with ours. Ours is not like that at all. We can lead him in our front yard with a bucket. Now he does like to go rodeo style on us when he gets in wide open areas when he gets to new paddocks he's excited he so. is very excited and he, he, so he will show that so you really have to watch him but as far as being mean and aggressive and snorting and blowing and all he that do all he that. does not do any of that see our little uh homestead in the hard way our little bull calf that we did have he got he, he was to a point where he was almost making our our, our little angus calf that we have here he was almost making her go a little crazy. So, you know, if you have one crazy cow, they're going to make everybody crazy. So, he said about three years old is when they normally change. Well, He's probably that's about right. two he and was, a half. But uh, talking about the bull. Yeah, the yeah. bull, yes. Well, the only he, bull is, is, is over three. He's over three now. He, is he? He, he He's about three and a half. But uh, our little bull calf, he, he got crazier as time went. And also, um, not only that, it's, it seems like, you know, he never was calming down. So he started breaking barbed wire. It just wasn't worth keeping, but so far we've had it all go well. So, yeah, so that's kind of that's kind of exciting. Um, one thing I was going to tell Swampy Acres when um, one of the cool things is where we're at. A lot of the water drains off, but we went through a period of time where it rained week after week after week early spring which was right when we got Elsa and she ended up getting mastitis so we called the guy and kind of because we never milked so we this was all a learning process for us in the beginning so we were trying to um figure this whole thing out so we called and just kind of run it by him he said likely it's environmental so where with it being wet, you definitely have to keep your environment clean. Um, it, it's it's hard knowing that it's wet and muddy and they go lay down and all of that. So you do have to really watch. Watch out and be real careful. So um, that's something to think about when you're dealing with that, with the water and um, just watching your cows and making sure that they're um, clean in a clean and dry environment and, that you can provide. So, yeah. And what's so crazy is um, for us with the cows, uh, the paddocks that seem to be wet. Now, don't your own. You have to be careful because they can tear it up. So um, we, we watch them when they're in those wet areas, too. So. But anyways, um, here's some. Uh, some raccoon trout. Let's see. I've got to reset my raccoon trout. Okay. Oh, she's <laughs> Yeah. I'm glad we don't have raccoons. raccoons can issues. cause some damage in lots of different places. Little Feet Farm Homestead. That means a lot. Oh, Thank you so very much for uh, saying that. And I hope we become a lot of people's favorite channel. <laughs> uh, we we love doing this. And for us, uh, the thing we oh, enjoy. Thank you. Yeah, we, we enjoy. Um, really just kind of document our life really for mm -hmm. our story with our children. Too, we also fun. like to share what we know <laughs> and our experience was, you know, with people too. And, um, you know, we make it a family thing and that's important to us. So. I was on my school kind of this year. never seen that though. Um, I tell you what we just dealt with. I, I don't know if you mentioned it earlier, but um, beauty, our, our little, uh, Angus Heifer, she she started getting a little infection on her face, so we had to we we did a video on that. Yeah, but uh, this even this little shot that we gave her did not work. We actually had to take her to the vet the other day. But hey, it, I mean the vet was like, oh, that's normal. Gave her the little treatment. And it's pretty common around here, which is which, like I said, you know, we're still we've got so much to learn. Yeah, but tell them what they did, which I thought basically was pretty unique. It, they developed a. Them. You know, calves under two are more susceptible to They haven't to built their immunity up yet. So she she developed a wart basically from a cell barn calf that came in 
on our property one time. Um, no, no other cows had any issues, but that she just developed a, a, a cattle one. wart. But, um, you know, if they're not going to hurt the cow. They don't physically hurt the cow at all, but they just make them look bad. So we um, we had to take it to the vet. The vet knew exactly what was going on. No big deal. He basically took them and pinched them. The thing about cows with that was what they had to do was they had to make them bleed. To make them bleed, it makes them build immunity to and build antibodies right. to it. So it so makes them the, kill their own problem. So it basically is taking it and letting enough get in their blood to where they can build up their immune to it. And then their immunity will actually cause it to go away. Right. So it's really, really unique. I would say very unique concept way to look at it. Um, I mean, so, for us, and, and the one thing we liked about that was because he'd have to like treat her with a shot or anything yeah. like that because uh, I don't know if y'all have watched, but we, we try to be as organic, as natural as possible, even with our cows. Uh, our cows, they're dewormed with with, with, with a, a germicidal soap, basically, that we get from Shakely's. It's an H2 soap, so people think we're crazy when we say <laughs> that, but that's how we deworm. I uh, never had an issue from it. And then on top of that, um, we, we give them a lot of vitamin C and a lot of uh, apple cider vinegar. So we do things a little different. Uh, and you're right. Usually cows do rub them off. And see... That's what he said. He said, you don't actually have to, to pull them off. You don't have to treat them anyway. Pretty much it will take care of itself. But because we had this new bull, bull calf coming and because our, well, our cows are still kind of, one of them's kind of young, we didn't want it to pass through the herd. So we went on and just kind of took care of it. So she looks great. I mean, she's she's actually beef. I mean, she's she's a meat cow, so she's really beefing up really good. So um, and I think she's bred too as well, but uh, she's doing really good now. We were worried about her just because of it, she was just unsightly on two or three little spots. So uh, she looks good again. So I'm, I'm real pleased with that. So. Little Feet Farm Homestead said, I have dairy goats that I milk, but we will see how that goes. I've had them for years, but always wanted, always love cows and just never had one. Uh, we are from uh, South Mississippi. So thank you for stopping by uh, from Canada. How crazy is that? Wow. We're actually coming to Michigan. Uh, in about two weeks to a homesteading event. So uh, we're not going to be too far from that line. We're actually coming to Port Huron um, a little uh, for that trip as well. And I think that's very close to the Canada line. So we, uh, we're we yeah, we kind of nervous. Have, we've but, been, uh, um, we <laughs> have been kind of talking back and forth, email. It's been several weeks. But yeah. uh, Luke and Sydney from MI Gardener, um, they have a storefront store there and we are going to go up hey, and tour their store while we're in that area it's only yeah. like oh we're going to be at the Pratt's Hoot Nanny and it's a little over an hour um we live in Mississippi in South Mississippi so yeah it's going to be like a 15 hour journey at the minimum in a Maybe. in an RV with five kids that uh we haven't drawn uh, drove out of, out of state, state yet so uh, we're a little nervous, sir. Fun stuff, though. Yeah, so we're excited. We're going to be going up to Michigan and um, going to the Hoot Nanny with the Pratts, and then we're going to shoot over that Friday and go to MI Gardener storefront. Um, Luke and Sydney, if y'all are not familiar with them, we got a lot of our seeds from them this year. Um, really sweet family. Uh, Luke is very, 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 very. very. Very knowledgeable. Homestead in the hard way. Thanks for stopping by. And you're right. I can't, you can never trust uh, any bull, but especially a Jersey bull. So thank you for stopping by, by the way. But um, yeah, we're excited about that trip. I don't know if anybody going to the, the Brett family hoot nanny uh, homestead event in Michigan. I doubt, I don't know where all y'all are from, but is anyone going to that event in two weeks? Pine Knot family farm. Did you say hey to them? Yes, I did say hey to them. Uh, um, yes, we are going to HOA in October. We We've are, already got our tickets. We are so excited about that. Now, the only thing, that. we haven't got our RV spot there at the campgrounds. We we have called HOA. Uh, we do have our tickets. We are members of Homesteaders of America. But, um, you know, we, we haven't got the spot Single at the campgrounds man, yet. Thank you for joining us. Better it's late okay. than never. That's right. Better <laughs> late than never. But, uh, yes, we are going to HOA this year. We're excited about that. Uh, these are the two biggest ones we're going to, which is uh, – the Pratt family, um, Hoot Nanny, and then of course the HOA. We're going to try to make maybe one more this year. Um, you know, when you have a milk cow, that's it's, it's hard. hard. We um, really want to. Really we really want to go to the Stivers as well. Um, we're gonna. These have already been planned. They've been planned for 
the first part of the oh, screen. Yeah, definitely. So February these have been planned for a, several, a while now. And we really um, want to go to the Stivers. It's just going to be, like we said, you know, when you're dealing with We're gonna try. something We're that you have it. to milk every single day. It's not common in our area. Um, we're just going to, you know, we're just going to have to work it out and see if we can get it worked out. Thank right, you Swampy so much. Swampy Fox and we're going to HOA. Yay. Yeah. We're super excited to meet some Swampy of you Acres guys. and Little Feet both said that. Good. We are super excited. Yes, we, we do have someone to milk with us. Again, if you follow our journey, we 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 were always hand milkers. Um, but we had to we have a little machine that we use because we couldn't find hand milkers, to be honest right. with you. So we have two different couples that are willing to come milk for us. Uh, so one's going to milk for us as we go to the Hoot Nanny in Michigan in two weeks. And then we have another couple that will come for HOA. And that's why I say we're going to try to make the Stivers. And we're going to also try to make one more event that's uh, in August as well. But to be honest with you, <laughs> they may not want to milk, but just one time this year. So yeah. we'll have to kind of watch it. But, uh, you know. It is what it is. So you know, if and if we have a good experience, if they come and Elsa's good for them and everything goes well and smooth, they may, they may. You know, I, I feel like they'll come back. But yeah. Elsa is very, she's gentle, very, easy. very, but she's also very timid. She is timid so because well. she is so gentle. You know, if she sees a new face or a stranger, she automatically stops in her tracks. And she'll stare you down and she just, you know, she's very timid. So, you know, we're just going to have to kind of see how it goes. And But, you know, Aiden, uh, our oldest, he's been milking. Don't get me wrong. She knows him. But just to have somebody else hands on to kind of say uh, it's not me doing it. He's come out there several times. And, um, hey, Miss Paula Joe. She's, she's done well with him. Hey, Paula Joe. Thanks for coming by. Been out weeding the garden. Amen. That's why we're actually doing again for winter and for spring. I, I have not, I've never done salads, tarps. I've never done weed this fabric. This is going to be new for us. But I promise you, after this year in the garden, I am going to do it for fall and for spring. So I'm, I'm anxious to try that because I'm. We're gonna see how it goes. Sick of weeds for sure. Yeah, and they grass, have so been really bad. Real bad this, this year. year. And I know it's probably from from the tiller or probably from our rakes or whatever it may be. So. Uh, you know, it is what it we've is. had a lot of rain here today. So we this Goodness, afternoon, yeah. he went out and cut, but it was like cutting the swamp. I mean, it was really wet because we got so much rain earlier. Pinot, we have uh, about 25,000 people that live in our area, uh, in our small town of, of Mississippi. And we couldn't find it. We put it on social media. Uh, we were supposed to go to the shindig to the VW Family Farm and Roots and Refuge shindig because uh, we we developed a, a, I think a very good relationship with VW, but we couldn't go because we could not find um, anybody in the middle. I mean, yeah. it's one of those things and, that everybody said in, they may do it, and then when it came down to it, it just yeah. they wouldn't. So I yeah. understand completely, uh, completely. I have twelve inches. All right, our cabin in the woods says where's that at, but I'm not sure what they're talking about. I don't know what we are talking about. Oh, okay. I'm not sure either. Uh, Canada I don't know is that. beautiful. It is very beautiful. Colby has never gone. I went to Quebec, yeah. a part of Quebec, um, probably about 20 years ago. And we went to Niagara Falls. And it is definitely a very beautiful sight to, do, to see. I would love for our family to be able to go back there one day. Um, Pine Nut, I agree. The the milking is the best part is one of the best parts of our homestead. However, uh, it is probably the most, um, I don't want to say it, the, 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 the part that you have to say, okay, I'm, I'm willing to say this is something I've got to do every day. It's uh, not really it's a 20 sacrifice, degrees, but it, in a way it is. Yeah, um, definitely. I mean, it's, it, it is a sacrifice in the way that, you know, we used to just kind of pick up and go. Uh, we, we wanted don't do to go that to the much. beach or we wanted to go shopping or, you know, spend the night somewhere and go shopping the next day or, you know, whatever. Paula Joe, I think that's that a anymore. great idea. 12 <laughs> inches of wood chips. I saw that earlier. Did you see she, she's okay. going to come travel and uh, milk for people. So I'm good with <laughs> hey, that. Hey, you would, you, you would make money. Cause, that's right. You know, we, we, you know, we don't go anywhere unless we find somebody to milk for us. So. Uh, do you ban your bulls, swampy acres? We, um, uh, our sizzle, the one that we were talking about that was crazy, was banded and the band broke. Uh, and that's why he was not a steer. He became a bull calf that was crazy. Yeah. When um, we initially got him, we, to we were told that he was, but he was not. Uh, yeah. And uh, Nana Grace, thank you for coming by. Um, 
Uh, also, banding is not bad. I mean, that's that's definitely a form that I think that would be smart. We've talked about we we hadn't figured out on this bull cap if we are going to band or um, or just leave him a bull. Um, he's growing off pretty, so I guess what we're going to do is we may leave him a bull and just see how it goes from there, <laughs> and and decide if we're going to uh, band him or not. But uh, you never know. He's he's not really with any cows, but but our milk cows, so I don't think it's going to be an issue. No, it's not hard to do at all. You do need you, you don't need a stanchion. You need a shoot to do it. I mean, you need a palpation shoot um, or a head gate that's got some good sturdiness to it if you choose to do it. It's mm -hmm. not hard, but you need to do it when they're very little too. The, the bigger they get, the harder it gets. So, um, like him, he's he's at the point where um, it would be hard. But um, you know, it's it's not impossible. There's other ways to to just to make a steer out of a bull. So. Um, but that's that's the easiest way, and also if they're small, that's the best way. Uh, oh, HOA, HOA is in Virginia, by the way. So um, it's going to be in October. Um, I think mid it's around October, yeah, mid October. I can't October remember the exact date. Thirteenth ish, somewhere around there. But it is. We in are Virginia. super excited about that. There's I would say be a lot of good speakers, a lot of good teaching. HOA is probably the biggest homestead event, uh, along with. Uh, Baker Creek Festival. I think that's probably the two biggest homestead or YouTube. And we style will, we so. really we've got that on our calendar right. for next year. We wanted to go again, uh, milking. <laughs> that was, yeah. But we that was do. We, we're going. That's going to be on our calendar next year for sure. That's a must for us. Um, if we ever make it back your way, we will definitely let you know. Canada is beautiful. Alaska yeah. is somewhere we really want to go. Um. Yeah, banding is what most people uh, tend to do, especially if they're a young calf and they're they're on their mama. The best way to do is band them versus anything else. You're exactly right, uh, and it's not hard to do. And and <laughs> he probably did get ticked off that way. <laughs> so, but um, you thought it had calmed him down a little bit, but it sure didn't. So, but uh, this next one we haven't banded. I mean, he's he's still a bull calf, and we're going to just kind of see how he grows off first. Uh, his his main objective is to be a freezer calf um but i guess we'll see we always leave our mind and our, our thoughts open because he is pretty and he's growing off to be a real long thick bull um which could benefit us as a replacement bull one day so we're just gonna kind of watch him he grows up to a point where we can go ahead and um let him be a freezer cow wow wheel, 75 sure. miles from niagara falls it That's is pretty absolutely awesome. beautiful i was pretty young 14 15 when we went it was on a mission trip that we went to do we stayed at a campground for over a week in tents and um we did a uh bible school there and while we were there we got to do some um extra activities and that was one of them it's very beautiful we're excited i'm not saying we won't try to cross into canada even when we go up there because port huron i don't think it's far from it when we come up for the hooting in two weeks, but um, we're trying to figure out if we're going to rent uh, a, a, vehicle. a van or be a vehicle while we're up there because we're bringing an RV. So we, the last thing we want to do is is uh, try to take that through. <laughs> I think you have to either go through Lansing or Detroit from where we're going to be to get to Port Huron. And I just don't know if I'm comfortable driving this big RV yeah, through I, Detroit. So I think we're we probably going to rent a vehicle, a vehicle once we get up there. And if we rent a vehicle when we get up there, we're going to, um, we are going, we, we probably won't cross into Canada if we can, just to try it out and just to say we've been there and, and I've uh, done that. So uh, we're excited about going. We also have pigs too, swampy acres. And, um, yeah, on them, you just would, uh, you just castrate at that point. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we have not uh, our bull, our boar. We have not castrated because our goal with ours, we have American We're, guinea hog, so our goal is to breed them, and uh, of course the piglets will have babies. And yeah. I, we believe she's coming in heat, or she could be even be pregnant because she is really grown. So yeah, I noticed her right. She was probably five and a half, and they say six to eight months, but she was probably five and a half months, and I noticed started noticing a change in her. So. Um, Pucha Studios, uh, thank you. I love, I uh, thank you for watching for sure. But uh, so this, uh, she's really from like, so that's where your name comes from. Okay, I, I, I was trying to figure out what that meant. So I'm glad you explained that to us. Um, I think that's awesome. I really do. Uh, our goal is for our channel is always to make content that matters. 
Um, you know, we watch some bloggers who uh, who are just um, who, who are for fun and entertaining, which we enjoy. We love. But then we also love watching uh, homesteaders who are uh, really trying to teach us stuff because that's what we want to do is we want to learn. I mean, there's there's always something for us to learn. Just like uh, we've been really pushing on ways to garden more organically. And this year we have learned a lot from mistakes and we have learned a lot by watching other YouTubers uh, on permaculture. So, um, you know, that's why we do it. And that's why we love it. We love watching people teach us. things. So. That's very, that's very um, unique. I really like that. That Good name. Point. So sorry that her mom passed of cancer. Cancer seems to be very rapid yeah. um, in our nation right now. Uh, Camped in Canada, but don't bring meat in or out because they'll take it. That's interesting. That is, that is interesting. <laughs> um, awesome. American guinea hogs, too. I love American guinea hogs. Six, been to every state, but six, camping all the way. We have a beautiful country. We do have a very beautiful country, and that is really cool. All states, but six. That's amazing. There's, I mean, Mississippi's Mississippi. We <laughs> Probably yeah. not one on that list, yeah. I wouldn't imagine. Uh, if you like There's pine trees, uh, if you like pine trees, come to Mississippi. <laughs> That's about right. Pine trees and, and heat. Go. Yeah, and, and humidity. And, heat. and humidity, so. Uh, we've been on here for almost 50 minutes. Thank y'all for stopping by. I think we are going to call it a night for the night, but thank y'all again for coming by. Thank y'all for watching. Uh, I'm going to check out, uh, piece of studios. Uh, I've, I've never heard of that channel, so I'm going to come check you out and thank you for watching. Uh, American Guinea hogs is where it's at, by the way. Um, mm. but Hey, we, yes, uh, real quick, swampy acres. We do have a heritage breed that is registered. The boar is registered. Um, of our hogs on our cows our bull is our two bulls are registered wow <laughs> well thank y'all for coming by thank you single man uh we will see y'all on the next one beth you got you got us on the tail end we're fist and leave we're fist and leave but thank you for stopping by for sure and uh, you can go back and watch it though beth that's right that's right but again what do we always say Happy homesteading, y'all. Happy homesteading, y'all. <laughs>